Alright guys, it's V Singh here and I am here with uh, the review for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 2. Uh, sadly, I'm so running solo today. I couldn't, uh, there was basically no one around when I needed to record this. Uh, it was way early in the morning for the Americans and I believe Demon was at work, either at work or asleep because I am recording this hella early. Hella hella early. Um, but I needed to do this and get it up for you guys. But we're going to talk about NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Now, I was really looking forward to this show, as we all were, because last year, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn far surpassed SummerSlam in quality. And I will have to say that I haven't seen SummerSlam yet. Um, I will be reviewing that as well, but I haven't seen it yet. But SummerSlam has to do a hell of a job to take over from NXT, because uh, no pun intended. This show was great. I love this show. But um, we should probably get right into the card. So up first, they decided to open the show with Austin Aries versus No Way Jose. Um, like I thought they might. It was either between this or the Ember Moon debut, but they went with No Way Jose. He and Austin Aries opened up the show and it was a good choice because No Way Jose was the first entrance and like his music and his gimmick got the crowd hyped and into everything. So it was a lot of fun. They did a nice thing with um, No Way Jose's entrance. They had him come out, and he had a he had a conga line of of fans, and it was like it was nice to see like the kids and the families all getting involved. And it was a really nice touch. Austin Aries made his way out, and he was over like he was hella over with the crowd. They both both guys were. It was nice. It was they both got right nice reactions and stuff. But it is. It is Brooklyn, and it is a smart crowd, so they were cheering for, like, the well-known indie-traveled wrestler, rather than the WWE's homegrown kind of NXT talent in Oi Jose, so they loved Austin Aries. Uh, the match itself, um, I was, I guess, pleasantly surprised. It was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. They worked incredibly well together. Jose showed off like a lot of charisma and like the more mean streak to his gimmick which is what we wanted. We wanted him to show off that he could be a savage if he wanted to and not just the fun loving animal. Fun loving animal is a kind of weird, weird, weird thing but um yeah. The match was a lot of fun. It was a good choice for the opener. They got a lot of time and I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance. This is probably not going to be a long review. I'm probably just going to hit a few bullet points but I thought I get it to you anyway but yeah. Match was a lot of fun and it came down to Austin Aries uh, flipping out of, uh, I believe, uh, an attempted superplex, hitting a sunset flip powerbomb out of the corner, locking in the last chancery and Jose immediately tapped, which is great. I love that. I love when wrestlers fight um, to get out of a submission hole, like not be put in it, but once they're in it, they immediately tap. It, it builds the submission up more. Like you fight so hard to be not put in it because it is so damaging that once you're in it, you tap immediately. It builds a submission hold up. So I do like when wrestlers tap immediately. It makes, like it doesn't make sense when a wrestler holds on for like five minutes and he's fighting his way to the ropes. It's like, that move can't hurt that much if you're surviving this long. But that's like a, another point for another day. There were some nice spots in this match, like Jose going for his big roundhouse, Aries ducking it and moving out of the way, then getting caught with it a minute later. Uh... Aries teasing the Brain Buster. I don't think he's done the Brain Buster yet in NXT. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was nice for him to tease that. But Jose uh, countered it into a very nice uh, Falcon Falcon's Arrow. Like, I love seeing a Falcon's Arrow. It's, it's a beautiful move. But yeah, it was a lot of fun and it was a great, great match to get the, start, uh, the show off to a, a hot start. But um, Austin Aries won. Then after the match, Austin Aries wasn't satisfied and he uh, locked in the move on Jose again, the last chancery. And to the joy of the crowd, young Hideo Itami Hideo came out to interrupt for no reason, to be honest. like He just kind of appeared. Um, he's back now and they kind of want to make him a big deal again because he is a big deal. Kenta Kobayashi is a very big deal in the wrestling community. So he came out in a very nice suit with horrible shoes, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, he came out and Austin Aries tried to lay into him. Uh, Hideo made his comeback and to much joy and revelation from myself and the crowd, he hit the GTS, the go to sleep. They finally allowed Hideo Otami to hit the move that he invented. No longer are they afraid of the crowd chanting CM Punk at that move because 
Like, it's Hideo's move, like, let the guy do it, and the crowd loved it, there was n I don't think there was a CM Punk chant, if there was, it was really small and we didn't pick up on it. So that's a good sign, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I, that was really glad, I was really glad he hit the GTS, I was really, I'm really glad that they're doing something with Hideo. Ever since he came back, he's just been doing squash matches and not had a story, but now he's feuding with Ares. Hopefully that leads to the next takeover, that would be a nice hype match between two like veterans and blah 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 blah. So that should be great. But up, up next after the opener and the shocker of the GTS from Hideo, came the debut of Ember Moon. Ember Moon took on Billy Kay and this was your typical NXT debut uh, takeover match. Billy Kay made her entrance, it was a nice little entrance, she got new music, cool, cool, she had a nice outfit, cool. Ember Moon came out and she had some pretty badass music and good look. She had the red contacts and all that stuff in her eyes. She looked like a badass and she hella thick. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're kind of thick. You're kind of thick. But yeah, it was like the match was nothing special. Billy Kay controlled a little bit because they don't want to completely squash her because they seem to have some faith in her. Like they put her on TV and they've been pushing her in NXT a little bit. And the women's division is kind of thin right now, so they don't want to like completely bury her. But um. It was basically a match to sh uh, showcase um, Ember Moon's abilities and talents. Like, she had some nice stuff. She sh showed off some strength uh, with, uh, I believe, she had a power bomb, and she done a, a springboard crossbody. So she showed off her athleticism. And after a few back and forth minutes, uh, she hit, uh, I guess, uh, like a corkscrew stunner off the top rope. I make it sound cooler than it was. Like, it was, it was cool, but it was like no like mind blowing or anything. But it was a nice little move. Um, there's honestly not much to say about this, it was just a, a showcase for Ember Moon. She came out, hit a few spots, sent the crowd home happy. She seems to really enjoy her gimmick and she was having fun and Billy Kay got to showcase some stuff as well, which was nice. They had some nice exchanges and stuff like that, there was a few nice submission holds. There was a couple of botches, but can't help that in wrestling, like, I, I know personally. But it was a nice, it was a nice start for Ember Moon, and I'm glad that they're putting some more focus back into building new women because we'll get to the women. But um, third match on the show was uh between Andrade El Andrade Cien Almas. I always mess up saying his name. Andrade El uh, Andrade Cien Almas. Andrade Cien Almas uh, versus the making his in ring debut for NXT TV. Uh, Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. Um, and if you'll excuse the pun, Bobby Roode's entrance was indeed glorious. Um, it was a lot of fun, like, he came down on a scissor lift, and, like, he descended from the heavens, and he was doing, like, the fucking pose, and it was just so over the top, but it worked. It was hilarious. Crowd was hella into it. The crowd sang his entrance music the entire time. Which is amazing because he debuted like three weeks ago, <laughs> um, but they, that was impressive. Um, they were kind of mild on Andrade, like he didn't get any reaction at all. The entire match was the crowd going insane for Bobby Roode, like they were 100% behind him. And uh, I don't blame them, Bobby Roode's a hell of a talent. Um, it was nice to hear like the This Is Glorious chants like right off the bat and the, the dueling boos and yay when they were doing the punching and all that stuff. Uh, the match itself, it wasn't, like, particularly amazing. It was good. It was good. It was a good match. But, like, it was just kind of there. <sighs> like, I don't want to shit on it, but it was just kind of there. Like, it did its job. I would, I will say that Andrade impressed me. He got to show off more of who he is and why they tried to make it sound like a big deal when they signed him. And he got to show off more of La Sombre because that was his old gimmick. Like he did the, the luchador stuff and the springboards and the dives and things like that and the corkscrews and it was pretty, it worked. And Bobby Roode was a dickish heel which is what he does best. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just a basic uh, straightforward match, the crowd was in behind Bobby Roode the entire time. Then kind of out of nowhere Bobby Roode just hit a pump handle slam for the finish. I guess they're going with a pump handle slam for his finisher, it was kind of underwhelming. I don't want him to use that as his finisher. NXT, if you're listening, make his finisher something else. And that was kind of it. Like, Bobby Roode came out, Andrade came out, crowd was insane for Bobby. They had a match, it was cool, it had some nice spots and blah blah blah. And Bobby kind of won clean out of nowhere, which is good. I want them to push Bobby Roode and I want them to build him up as a main event heel. Not just in NXT, but in the main roster too, eventually. But, um, yeah. 
that was that match. Um, then after that, we come to the NXT Tag Team Championships of the World. The Revival defending against Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. And you may call this controversial, but in my opinion, so far, this is the best tag team match of the year. Hands down. No other tag team match has come as close to this as, like, in terms of quality at all. Like, it was... Spoilers, it was match of the night. Easily for me. Like, it was just beyond incredible. Um, I actually went back and re-watched it. Um, this is the only match I re-watched. Um, it was just great. It was just great. Like, the... Their clash of styles worked well together, like um, the old school NWA Southern wrestling tag team style of the revival against the modern indie style of Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Like they just meshed so well, and they did the old school like uh, put heat on. I believe Gargano. They put heat on Gargano, and he went for the hot tag, but the ref was distracted, so he, they didn't see it, and it didn't count. Like, even the little things like that, they work. They still work. Like, the crowd ate it up. The crowd was 100% behind Gargano and Champa, and they ate it up. And, yeah, it was just a very, very, very solid, technically sound match. Um, the, like, the, one of the highlights of this match was just the finishing sequence. There were so many false finishes. Like, like, there was, like... Four or five separate times where the crowd and myself bought into the match that that it was over, and we had new champions, the champs retained, but the false finishes were spot on and so well done. And um, eventually, the revival, or uh, I don't know which one because I don't know which one is which. I think it was Scott Dawson, chop blocked. Uh, sorry, no, it was Dash Wilder. He's the he's the fair haired one. <laughs> he chop blocked Johnny Gargano, and Scott Dawson came in and locked in uh, a heel hook. Or was it a knee bar? One or the other. And eventually Gargano tapped out. So the champs retained. Um, but yeah, like the match was fantastic. It was damn near a perfect match. Crowd was insane for it. Ate up everything. Gargano and Champa did their thing. The Revival did their thing. And I will say right now. The Revival are probably the best tag team in the world at what they do. I will say that with like complete confidence. Show me another tag team that does what they do better than them. It was a great match. Um, there is like there was um, talk of maybe Champa and Gargano doing a breakup story and feuding, and I do see that happening because they've built up their friendship and their brotherhood like very well on TV, and they're playing it off a lot. And there was a, like a slight brief moment after the match where Champa gave Gargano a kind of disappointing look. So. I'm if we get that I'll be happy because those two have amazing matches together always have done um I don't know like the thing is with this is the okay fine the revival retained where do they go from here like TM61 is the only other main babyface team on the roster I don't I don't like them that much I don't think they're ready um there's the other the authors of pain which are two heel team like it'd be the re revival and offers a pain two heel teams going up against each other don't know if that'll work well, I don't know but I did like the match the match was great um, easily match of the night easily match of the night uh, I was surprised I said that after the th after the show but yeah like that was a phenomenal phenomenal tag team match but yeah after the tag team titles we got to the women's championship uh, champion Asuka Defending against Bailey, the one and only Bailey, and the video package for this was really nice too, building up like Bailey being an underdog and Asuka being dominating, blah blah blah. But they did their entrances. Crowd was super, 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 super into Bailey because they always are. She had her wacky arm flailing, waving inflatable tube man thing. I don't know, I don't know what they're called, but she had them. There was some in the ring, which was new and it was cool. Asuka had this weird thing where she carried fabric to the ring. I don't know what that was. Like, if there's some Japanese culture, let me know. I just I didn't know what it meant. But she looked badass. She always looks badass. I will say this now. This match was a lot better than their match in Dallas uh, near the start of the year. Like uh, That match was slightly disappointing. People expected more, but we got what we wanted in this match. They played up the storyline very well of 
uh, Bailey doubting herself and uh, like almost being scared somewhat of Asuka and Asuka just dominating her and like one-upping her the whole time uh, but as the match progressed Bailey grew in confidence more and more and was taking control and like just just like it was kind of like that had that bring it attitude which was great it was a great little storyline in the match a couple of there was a botch with the power bomb spot but they, they kind of recovered from it well but yeah it was a nice story and flow to the match um in the end Asuka uh, locked into in the Asuka lock Bailey escaped it like kind of Bret Hart Roddy Piper style where she flipped it over into a pin Asuka got to her feet first and kicked Bailey in the head Bailey no sold it basically and stood up and said give me another one so Asuka did and that was the end of the match which again with like the people might complain like oh Bailey no sold the kick but like in the storyline of things it works like she was trying to prove that she could like hang with a big dog and she was like no like is that all you got bring it bitch I'm not down yet and she got up and she took another knee to the fa- or a uh, foot to the face and that was her for her account <laughs> but yeah the match was really good it was a lot better than their Dallas match and all those things. Um, like Sasha and Becky and Charlotte in the crowd was a nice touch, like a reference to the the four horsewomen. But Bailey lost, sadly, and Asuka retained. Now a couple points is I don't know where the women's division goes from here. Outside of Asuka and Bailey, on the NXT roster, there's no woman wrestler that's fully developed as a character. I don't know who Asuka feuds with next, unless they strap the rocket to Ember Moon. I really, I, I like, the only other one that's got a little bit of character development is Billy Kay, and she just lost, so I don't, I genuinely don't know where they're going here from with Asuka. I look forward to seeing what they do. I would like to see the Asuka-Ember Moon match, but like, obviously it's just a little too quick. And the other point is, it seems like Bailey is getting the call up to the main roster. Because they did that thing after the match where they left the camera on Bailey and the crowd were obviously giving her a standing ovation, chanting her name, and it looked like she was saying goodbye. She went out, she hugged Sasha, Becky, Charlotte, her mom, Izzy, her number one fan, and on her way to the back she pointed at like the NXT sign on the on the ring entrance and she kinda like said goodbye. So I believe it's finally time for Bailey to get called up, so let's all look forward to that, but as a final match for NXT, Bailey, you couldn't have asked for much better, to be honest. It was a great match against a great opponent. So well done you, Bailey. You've earned your spot. Uh, and then, finally, we move on to the main event. The one that everyone has been waiting for. We have champion Samoa Joe defending his NXT World Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. First things first, on the realist. Um... Nakamura's entrance was out of this world. Like, it was very simple, but it worked. Uh, a, a, a random violinist was standing in the aisle and li- live played Nakamura's entrance music on the violin, and and it was it was gold. Nakamura's entrance, uh, someone timed it, and it was like five minutes, but like it, it flew by because it was so good. It was such a good entrance, and the violinist, to his credit, was amazing, and just the atmosphere, like the lights, Nakamura's presence and charisma, the crowd singing the the song as well, and the violin, it was just magical, it was a magical moment. Then Joe comes out to the ring like a badass, just walking, saying, I'm a violent motherfucker, basically, and they proceeded to kick the shit out of each other for 20 minutes. Now... The match was good. I want to preface what I'm about to say with the match was good. I was just very let down, uh, personally. Huge fan of Samoa Joe for the last 15 years. Big fan of Nakamura for like the last 10 years. I expected these two to go out there and tear the house down. And there was just something missing from this match. It was missing that one element. It was still very good, but it could have been great, and it wasn't. Which upsets me. But like, yeah, they played the, the strong style very well. There was a lot of hard strikes, knees, elbows, punches, kicks, a lot of that. There was a lot of submissions. Um, Nakamura got, got out of Joe's submission holds, and they, put, they were playing up how no one's ever really done that to Joe, and it was nice, and back and forth. And um, Joe hit the muscle buster, and everyone thought it was over. Nakamura kicked out. Nakamura hit the bomaye, or the Kinshasa, as they're now calling it. 
jaw kicked out. Um, so they got the back and forth there, like the WrestleMania Falls finishes. Everything was great. Crowds was eating it up. Um, actually, on that first Kinshasa, I believe Shinsuke did break Samoa Joe's jaw. And I know Demon Eric and I were joking about how many concussions it'd be in this match. Well, well at least we got a broken jaw. Um, <laughs> better than nothing. Um, but then Shinsuke uh, managed to hit another Kinshasa, the second one, to become the new NXT World Heavyweight Champion, which I don't think any of us predicted. We all thought Joe would retain. But I was pleasantly surprised. I love Nakamura. I love everything the man does. The man is a god. He is the god, not a god. He's the god. So the crowd went home happy. Joe went to the back with a broken jaw, and that was that. But like I, as I said, this is a very quick review. It's only twenty minutes long. But I'm I'm kind of pressed for time. But overall, the show was fantastic. Um, great show. There was a couple of man moments, like like the. Bobby Roode match was slightly, eh, it was still good, like all the matches were good, but there was a couple that could have been great but weren't, but I do, um, for the wrestling fans out there that haven't seen this show, I highly recommend you go and seek out the tag team match, because that was a masterpiece. But yeah, um, SummerSlam, which will, which is on this Sunday, um, this was on the Saturday night, has a lot to live up to as far as hype, and I have hopes for the WWE, but um, I will be back in a couple of days with my review for SummerSlam, so if you enjoyed, leave a like and comment down your, your thoughts down, down below, and if you want to see more wrestling stuff, let me know, and subscribe, and all that stuff. I play Pokemon here if you didn't know, and other games, but uh, I'm going to head out, and I'll be back with my SummerSlam review, so I'll see you guys then. Bye bye